Hi there, and um, welcome to this Naturehood Live on the um, Tagpole Garden Village Naturehood. Um, I'm Claire, and I will be showing you around my um, rented patio garden um, here, um, just just between Oxford and um, Swindon. And, um, this is part, I'm sure you know, of every Wednesday um, from at 12 o'clock from the Naturehood team. And we have another really exciting one for you next week. We have Sarah Staunton Lamb, who will be there and will be, um, who will be in her garden and talking to you about that. And um, a little bit about me, I'm Claire. Um, I am the research manager for Naturehood. I hope you guys can all hear me. Um, I see that I've got some slightly poor connection, but hopefully that will work itself out. I'm Claire. I'm um, the research manager for Naturehood. I'm in charge of creating all the surveys that you've been doing and um, also um, analysing all of the amazing data that you've um, been submitting to me. So thank you so much for all of that. And I'm analysing it to, to create reports and publications that will help to influence how we, we um, guard life in our gardens and how we make our urban and um, our urban communities better for wildlife. And that's actually all part of what Naturehood is about. So Naturehood, for those of you who don't know, just whilst I'll do a quick intro before I start showing you my garden. Naturehood is a um, community site to make positive change for wildlife in their back gardens and private green spaces because by joining together as a community, um, we we can make a difference on a scale that actually impacts wildlife positively. So as we've all probably found out living in lockdown, it's um, rather difficult to be um, confined to your house and, and to your, your personal space. We have to go out, we have to get food, we, we miss our friends a lot. I know I certainly do. And it, it's no different for wildlife, really. They need these bigger areas to, to, they need connected habitat with resources spread across it to, to, um, to use, to survive. And so that's what working as a community helps to do, because if communities come together to do it, then they will have lots of back gardens across an area um, that are, are providing resources for wildlife. And our, our, our private green spaces, our gardens, our balconies, they are they make up 29.5 percent of um, urban areas so a really significant amount of space that can make a massive difference to wildlife which in the uk is currently we currently think that 58 percent of our species are in decline so a lot of work to be done there and so um we've got a couple of people so i'm going to start and hopefully the signal holds up i'm sorry about that it's been fine before um but we're going to start looking around my garden so i'm going to turn the camera around and here you'll see it. I'm going to start just showing you. So this is just here, which is lovely. And then you can see that all the way around, all the way around here is just wool. Solid, solid thick wool. And I, um, as I might have heard, as I've said, so I can't do anything like drill a hole through the wall and make a nice connected space for wildlife through the wall. I can't do that here. But we do have this one area between our two houses and I know the cats like to Unfortunately, my garden is a bit of a free zone for any wildlife that can't fly. But so we've been working particularly hard on attracting birds and, and flying insects. And one of the best resources that is right next to my garden is this amazing hedge that you can see at the back there. Um, and it's on a building that's actually, unfortunately, um, going to be cut down, uh, uh, is going to be developed soon. But we do know that we've got wood pigeons nesting in here, sparrows hanging out here all the time, and lovely blackbirds that are nesting just over in that area. And the blackbirds nesting them means that they can't do any work on this building until September. So all the way through March, all the way from March to September, no work can be done. So that's going to keep providing an awesome resource um, for birds and insects all through the summer. And so one of the first things I've done here is I set up 
some bird feeders. Now, these aren't perfectly positioned because um, my garden doesn't have much space. This was the only thing I had to hang it on and it's quite close to the house. And birds tend to like um, bird feeders to be very near vegetation so that you have somewhere quickly to go and hide. So in that respect, oh, I'm not sure if you can see, but you can see the wood pigeon and a sparrow just there up in the hedge. So they can see the, um, so that's quite good that the hedge is just there for cover, but it's not perfect. Um, and it's a bit too close to the house, but I have had sparrows um, coming particularly to this one every, I have them coming every morning. I made out of a plastic bottle and some twigs, really easy to do but still I have seen sparrows using it. Um, this time of year, they don't need as many, um, they don't need as much food. Um, there's much more around. Feed really careful of with, with bird feeding is that you, um, that you clean out your feeders regularly and you weep up the ground under them regularly so that there's no poop. But one of the reasons you need to clean them out, so if what you can see here is one that I took down the other day, and you can see here all this food at the bottom that's wet, that's got wet and it's, um, yeah, it's got wet over time and it's all just clogged together. Now, this is a great harbinger for bird diseases. So that's why you need to clean all of the food out of your um, bird feeders about every six weeks, four to six weeks. And um, it's a good idea to let your bird feeders get empty as well over time. So that's what I've done is I've taken down most of the bird feeders because the birds don't mix. Um, they don't need as much fat at this time of year. And so it's a good idea to, to save all uh, the peanuts and stuff like that for, for winter when the birds will really need the, um, the fat to get through the winter. Okay, so what else have I been doing in my garden? Now, as I showed you around, a lot of you probably realized that I've got a lot of what most people would refer to being here about oh well, just under a year now um so this is my first real summer here and i decided just to see what came up and see what i already had here so let's go and have a little look one of my favorite things that i have here is i have dandelions and here you can see one right now now dandelions i left these to come up i already knew i had them i'm so excited they are brilliant um, they are one of the first flowers that come out each year and they are absolutely perfect for pollinators. So the flowers themselves are actually, this head is actually contains lots and lots and lots of flowers. You can see all of the, the pollen holding parts just here sticking up and that shows you that got lot, the number we have here shows you've got lots and lots and lots. And so there's lots of, so bees can get nectar from multiple flowers um, different flowers all sitting in this one flower head. So really great resource for bees, one of the earliest pollen sources. And the other thing that I love about them, is, um, dandelions are actually entirely edible. And so obviously before you ever do try and eat a plant, make sure that you, you know last year ate these leaves. In, um, I had them in sal pasta, salads, and they were really delicious. The bigger they get, the they get them a little, um, what's the word, a little more um, bitter, but still really delicious. And I really enjoyed having that different flavour. So these um, are going to be cleaned off and a nice food supply for me coming up. Um, we've got this other very um, similar, not 100% sure what this one is, but we think it might be common ground cell. And that's also got these lovely flower heads that are going to produce, that pollinators adore. The other thing to watch out for with things like dandelions and also this, this what I think is ground cell, is that this morning, all of these plants, sorry, this is, all of these lovely um, flowers were all closed up. And as the sun hits them, they open up. So these plants close and open every night, um, night and then open up again in the day. So they're gorgeous. I've also got this jasmine bush. Not a plant expert. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed for that. One of my favourite things in the garden, though, I've got a couple here, are these lovely violets, which I had no idea they were here. And then they just all started opening, and they are so pretty. Here is that 
think it's called an ivy leafed um to toad something i will get my notes um this is absolutely stunning so pretty and just coming out of the walls i had no idea that all of this stuff was here and one of the things i love about it is because it's native because it's mostly native and likely just to um it's probably going to be really good for, for pollinators and you can see that if you look at this you can look at these these are really simple plants where you can see the the parts where the pollen is held um whereas a lot of cultivars a lot of plants that we've we've bred for to look pretty they hide the anthers and stamens away they hide they hide where the pollen is and the pollinators can't always access it and then they can't use those plants so these plants that are natural that are native to the uk or that it's not always native but these really like simple wildflowers are really amazing for pollinators so that's why i left those and um someone who hasn't done much gardening before they are super easy to grow they they just do it themselves it's awesome and i get some nice color um the reason another reason i haven't um planted much is because i don't know how long i'm going to be in a rented place and um in this rented place and i would like something i can take away so my plan is actually to build a big planter in this area just here and I'll use that planter to plant things like vegetables. Um, I've got some tomato plants that are getting ready um, inside. They didn't like it when we just had the cold snap. I tried to bring them outside, but they didn't like it at all. So they've gone back inside. Um, I've got some chili plants over here that I'm in a planter just here. So I've been making that. I got some pallets um, long before lock And it's been a great project. I And um, I have been this is then pulled apart and I am now sanding them down very slowly before we make them into a planter. But fortunately, I think they came with some legs. So those will be my, my planter legs. And the other thing is I've got these amazing bricks here. Now these, sorry, not bricks. These are wooden blocks that came from the past. And I'm going to drill holes in these and these can be um, the solitary insects. So solitary bees and things like that. So we will, we will use those for that and then the planter will sit here and I can put up a stick from the planter and I'll be able to hang just around here I'll be able to hang all of my bird feeders and things like that and this is a bamboo tree that my next door neighbor has which is gorgeous and it has blue tits and um, sparrows constantly hanging out in it so I think they'll be much happier with that bit of cover right next to them. Oh, and I think just behind a sparrow has just landed in it to, to prove me right. And my neighbor here is amazing. I, I won't show you her garden actually, but um, she's got about, she's got so many feeders and stuff just down there in the rest of her garden. So, so she's done an amazing job, um, I like how well she's done. And um, the other thing I've been slowly putting it, uh, so that will be where the bird feeders go, and also I'll try and I'll attach the. Um, oh, there you go. I'll attach the um, solitary in um, the the bee um, hotels to the um, planter as well because I don't want to attach it to anything else on this this house. Um, if you have any other ideas of how I can make that or ways to do that let me know my final final in progress piece of work that i'm doing in this garden is i'm trying to make a pond now i've chosen tub ponds because then i can remove them but I'm, and i bought these gorgeous um oak barrel halves and then discovered that they were all leaky because they they dried out so i'm slowly but surely um very slowly um soaking them it takes them quite a while to soak and um get get to hold water but they're they're definitely getting there as you can see the big one is now fully holding water and i just need to to check the little one a bit more but they were very very leaky so really good progress is being made but what's and so this will now probably be ready for next year but what's most exciting about this is that I already haven't a pond yet, as far as I'm concerned. It, I'm not sure whether you can see. Yeah. 
So this pond isn't really a pond yet as far as I'm concerned. It's because it's I haven't yet seeded it. I was going to get some lovely um, pondweed from my, my friend's pond just up the road. Um, I wasn't going to bring any tadpoles or, or um, frog spawn along with it because um, they wouldn't be able to escape my garden and they'd be trapped here, which wouldn't be, a, that would not be a good life for them. Um, but I was going to take some frog spawn and then, you know, so I was going to take some um, of the pond weed and things like that. And then that would help seed the pond with this, my pond with some, some natural life. But I've already got, and I don't know whether you can see here and here, all of these little critters. And I don't know what larvae these ones are. I have seen in here, I can't see any. There was one in here yesterday. And I can't see any now. But I've got all of these other larva that I have no idea what they are. And there's so many of them, just so many appeared yesterday. Um, so if anyone can tell me what these are, I would absolutely love to know. Um, and this is really exciting. I just saw another hoverfly um, hovering by. So, um, yeah, and I've seen bees use the pond to get water. Actually, they tended to use um, the shallower tub that I have just here that's um, mostly evaporated. I need to clean it out, so I just was letting it evaporate. Really, really nice that even without having having seeded this at all, without having any vegetation in it, it's already providing a home um, and attraction for wildlife. So I buy that and excited for where this is gonna go in the next few years and as I get to make more changes. Now I can see I've gone over time already, so I'm going to um, wrap this up. Um, and you've seen pretty much everything that I'm, everything that I have been doing. Um, and there's just another little sparrow listening to what I'm talking about. Hopefully getting excited about all my plans. Um, so thank you so much um, for listening and for, for signing up. So much for listening and for for joining me as I, I show you my garden and if you've got any tips that can help me i am this is the first time i've ever had a garden so i'm just playing and learning and and seeing what happens and trying to find my own way listening of course as well to my parents a bit but mostly i'm finding my own way um of how i like to do things in my garden and yeah so if you have any tips please let me know and ideas on how i can construct stuff or I need to make a nice um, path for the ponds um, so that things can get in and out if they want to if they miraculously make it into my garden um, but yeah so if you have any tips or if you know what any of these plants are that I didn't if I've got any of the plants wrong or anything like that please let me know oh I forgot to show you one thing that's revolutionized my life this this legitimately revolutionized my indoor plant life was this tip that I found. So I've had quite a few of these um, glass bottles and I love the fact for this that they have this this neck. And all you and I fill them up with water, I pierce the tops. You can see on this one I've pierced the top, the other one needs doing. And then I turn them upside down inside the soil in my indoor plants. And then the plants just take as much water as they need. And my plant, my indoor plants, my herbs have never looked so healthy. I was slowly killing them by, um, I was slowly obviously underwatering them and they were slow dying and they just look so healthy now. So that is a tip that revolutionized my practice and I just remembered to show it. So yeah. So anyway, I'm going to go, I'm going to sign off now. Thank you so much for, um, joining me and looking around my garden. Um, thank you. Um, if you are interested in nature, if you're interested in gardening for wildlife, please sign up and please keep your eye out on our channels because we've got some really cool new cut news coming in the next few weeks. Join Sarah next week. She's got a gorgeous garden. And um, yeah, thank you for joining me and um, for letting me show you around my garden. Take care. Bye.